Live Better and Walk with the Fitness Show, hosted by fitness expert, author, and TV personality, Fitz Kohler. She'll tell you why diets are dumb, supplements are snake oil, and the truth about how you can earn a lean, hard, pain-free, and athletic body. Now for our favorite bossy blonde, Fitz Kohler. Hi, team. I'm Fitz Kohler, your fitness expert and very noisy race announcer. And welcome to the fitness show. Today, we're going to talk about why your excuses are lame. That's right. They are invalid, useless, inappropriate even. And uh, we're going to kick those excuses into the garbage can because they're holding you back right? You've got important things to accomplish. And there's all these little voices in your heads that are grade A uh, morons that, <laughs> quite frankly, are doing you more harm than good. And so uh, the gist of fitness right here is helping people live better and longer. And that comes along with just encouraging you to do better and be better. And so when it comes to fitness, there is no one size fits all. There is no end goal that fits for everybody. And it's interesting, you know, obviously I run in a big group of runners, right? My a big chunk of my career, one of my great hobbies is running. And so we talk about marathons a lot and marathons are awesome, but they're not for everybody. Certainly not for everybody. And so on occasion, people are like, I can't run a marathon or I don't want to. I, I don't care if you don't want to run, run a marathon. You know, your fitness, your rules, your goals. And so my goal, my intention is just to take you to the next level from wherever you are now. Oh, ooh, I got a weird little blurry spot in my eye. Did you ever get that? Okay. Anywho, <laughs> there was something in there. It was a blob of some sort. Uh, but yeah, to get you to the next step. And so if your next step is to lose the first pound of 200 pounds. Great. Let's start there. If your next step is to get in the ring and um, fight for UFC. Okay. Let's get you there. Um, but there's all these things that you want that you're preventing yourself from having. And they're probably things that you can have and you're screwing yourself out of. And you know what? Life isn't getting any easier, right? Zero percent of us are getting younger anytime soon. In fact, as the clock ticks away, we're getting older and things are getting harder, right? Oh, look at this guy. So Tim Powell reaches out today. Tim has lost, I, I think it's like 180 pounds. He's used the exact formula for weight loss and he's exercised his brains out for years now. And, and then he kind of stagnated. And so about a month and a half ago, I talked about, or I talked to Tim he reached out and said, you know, I'm not making progress. I'm frustrated. I said, you're not even trying to make progress. You're, you've settled where you are and you are behaving like a guy who doesn't want to make progress anymore. And I uh, gave him a little kick in the can like I'm going to give you guys today. And Tim messaged me today to tell me he's lost 16 pounds in the last week. Holy mackerel. I don't, I don't even know how that's possible other than the fact that he's gotten super disciplined. I know he's not starving himself. There he is. Yep, yep, yep. And he's kicked it into high gear. You know what he's done? He's cut out all of these crappy excuses that were holding him back. And so we're going to talk about your excuses. And maybe you can have the same level of success Tim has had. Maybe it's not in the category of weight loss. Maybe it's in the category of reducing pain or becoming more flexible or more athletic or feeling sexy in your underpants. I don't care. They're your goals. You set them. I'm just going to help you break through these barriers, these absolutely foolish barriers that nobody else but you is setting up in front of you. And oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. So he posted great pictures in his shirt. Tim, you've done a great job. I'm so proud of you. And I can't wait to bring you on the show next time you hit your point B. Okay. So let me, Tim Powell, you get me excited, Tim. Yeah. So we're going to get you to your next step, whatever that is. We're going to figure it out. So um, this week or about a week ago, I posted on Facebook and I think on Instagram and I said, hey, guys, tell me what excuses you have made to uh, get out of a workout or eating well or the excuses that are limiting you from accomplishing your fitness goal. And magically, dozens and dozens of people had 
tons of answers for me. And so I've listed them and we're going to, I am going to debunk all those excuses. A hundred percent of them we're going to debunk. And here's the deal. Even when I had cancer, there wasn't any excuse for me to not do something. And so, yes, I was super violently ill sometimes. And, uh, I wasn't able to exercise, but you bet your butt every time I got in the shower, I stretched. And then when I was in bed, I stretched. I did something to advance my agenda. And so that's where we're going here. Let's get you to your goals. And then you're going to message me in about a week or two months and say, oh my gosh, Fitz, I'm there. Thank you for kicking me in the can. And you may think I'm a jerk at the end of this. I don't care. Um, but in two months, you're going to love me because you're going to be where you are. So <laughs> let's make enemies, let's make friends, but you are going to do better and be better if you stick around and watch the whole dang show. Okay. So the most common answer I got, number one was no time. That's a lie. So we have 168 hours in a week, 168 hours a week. Many of those hours are spent lying down sleeping. So let's say, depending on who you are, five to eight hours, you're lying in bed sleeping. That's 35 to 50 hours a week. So you're lying down a lot. You get in your car to drive to work or school or errands. You sit down at a desk probably all day. Maybe you have some time for sitting on the computer or on Facebook. Maybe you have some time for watching television. There's over a hundred hours spent doing unproductive things. And so out of 168 hours in the week, if I asked you one hour, can you give me one hour of time is that asking too much? Knowing that you are virtually sedentary if you are not deliberately exercising. If I ask you if one hour a week is too much, hi, Susie, it, would you agree? No, you would say one hour is not too much. Okay, what if I said two hours out of 168? It's still not too much, right? What if I said five hours, five out of 168? Is that too much to dedicate to exercise? No, the answer to sane people is no, it's not too much. And they're like, well, I'm busy. Okay, well, you've chosen to be busy. You have chosen all of these activities in your life. You have to choose time for yourself. And of course, you hear that a lot. Make time, right? And so I, I like to use this, uh, what's the word? A comparison. So we all get up and we brush our teeth every morning, right? We brush, brush, brush. We're supposed to brush for two solid minutes. We're supposed to spend about 30 seconds flossing. Two and a half minutes right there for your teeth. Now our teeth are very handy for smiling and pictures and they help us talk without sounding weird. And of course they help us eat food. But the reality is if all of your teeth rotted out, if you lost 100% of your teeth, could you live? Yes, you could live. You could definitely live without your teeth. And in fact, lots of people do live without their teeth. However, um, can you live without your heart? If your heart rots out, if your heart gets bad, you haven't fed it properly or exercised it enough, can you live without a quality heart? No, that's the answer. The answer is no. So we have to start prioritizing the things that allow us to exist. You can exist for a very long time without your teeth, and a lot of people do it. You may have to gum down some, some smoothies or whatever, but you can live without your teeth. You cannot live without your heart. So we have to start sending priorities. And what, I, what I'd like to ask you is moving forward, if you are not willing to put in two and a half minutes a day or morning, night, we'll say five minutes a day for exercise, you will not brush your teeth. No exercise, no teeth brushing. I want you to have a full commitment to that. No exercise, no teeth brushing. Are we on page? You're all out there like, she's insane. No, I am making sense because you can live without your teeth. You may have stinky breath, fine, get scope, but you cannot live without your heart. So, you know, the purpose of Fitness, my brand, is living better and living longer. You can live a really long time without your teeth, but you cannot live well without your heart. But then there's all these other goals, right? So would you rather have, you know, the body of your dreams or a pair of pearly whites? right? You can replace the teeth. And, and I value teeth too, right? Teeth are, um, they're actually gum health and tooth health are reflective of heart health. But um, you have to, you have to do this stuff for your body and make the time. If you make the time for toothbrushing, you make the time for other stuff. Now, would I like for you to make 30 to 60 minutes a day for vigorous exercise in strength, cardio, flexibility, balance? Hell yes, I want you to do that. However, 
sometimes we don't have an extra 30 to 60 minutes or we haven't made it, right? So you can build in teeny tiny amounts of exercise that yield a very large result. So if I told you, person out there in Facebook land or YouTube, and I said, I want you to do 90 solid seconds of push-ups. Would you hate my guts? Yeah, probably. If I said, get down 90 seconds, up, down, up, down, you cannot rest for 90 seconds, no stopping. Do you think you would hate my guts by the end of the 90 seconds? Absolutely, because that's a heck of a lot of work. If I said 90 seconds of burpees, would you hate my guts? You would hate my guts. Why? Because that's hard and that's a really productive, challenging, effective 90 seconds. And so uh, if you think of exercise in small portions, every little bit counts, you can build in teeny tiny bits of exercise that matter throughout your day. And it's interesting. People are like, all or nothing. If I can't run six miles and I am not doing anything, that is horse crap. That is, I'm going to, I'm going to mind my language, but that's horse crap. That's stupid. That's absolute stupidity. You can accomplish a lot with little tiny increments. So time, it just is an invalid excuse. So you make it right. You make an appointment with yourself. I'm going to get up to the gym at noon and nothing's going to interfere. I'm going to go to the skating rink at five 30 tonight. If you invite me for dinner, if you invite me for drinks, if you tell me I need to pick up my kid, I'm going to find someone else to do it at 530. I will be at this roller skating rink skating laps. Then you make it happen, right? You let nothing interfere other than a legitimate crisis. And so few things actually qualify as legitimate crisis. So um, you put it in your calendar, you set an alarm, you block it off. If people want to meet with you, they have to join you, right? If you're going walking and they want to talk to you, they, you got to do walk and talk. You're out on the trail together or they're on your phone. Multitask. I'm okay with that as long as you're moving your body. But time is not an excuse. You have to make it. And in fact, I'd say like the, the two presidents we've had, Biden and Trump, probably not big exercisers, but right before that, uh, Obama and Bush exercise almost every day of their preg presidency. They have very busy presidencies. They lived as the most powerful men in the world and they found time to exercise because they knew it would help them perform at a much higher level. So if they can do it, you can do it. All right. Next excuse is I'm too tired. Wow. Aren't we all too tired? This is the contra contradiction to fatigue preventing you from exercise. You're probably tired because maybe you're out of shape. And if you exercise, exercise builds adrenaline and endorphins and actually produces energy. It's like a, you become a human solar panel, right? While you're, while you're doing the hard work, you're increasing the amount of energy within your body. So exercise creates energy. I promise you, if you think, oh, I can't wake up and do that. I'm too tired. Wake up throw on your shoes or your sports bra or whatever and go. The second you start moving, all of a sudden you start to power up. It's like, zzz, you can hear the wheels turning. You can he hear that power up sound within your body. And then all of a sudden, five minutes into it, you don't feel so bad. So if you are tired, it may be because you're not exercising enough. In fact, probably is. Now, if you're a, a beast and you're you're training for an ultra marathon and you're tired, okay, maybe you're a little tired from your ultra marathon training. But um that's the anomaly. Most people are tired because of lack of fitness. So crank it up a notch. It might be hard for the first few workouts. And then all of a sudden, it'll be hard if you don't work out. All right. Next one is, I don't know how to exercise. Well, golly, you could get on YouTube right now and find out how to fix the, I don't even know, car parts, some fancy part of a car you've never heard of. There is a YouTube video for absolutely everything in the world and someone giving out free advice on absolutely everything in the world. And if you go right here, fitness.com, I've spent the last 15 years dumping information in there to teach you how to get fit on your own. In fact, the, in, the intention of my business is always to leave behind something. If I get hit by a bus tomorrow and I'm no longer here, y'all can go to fitness.com and I've taught you how to eat wisely. I have the exact formula for weight loss. There's a trillion recipes. There's probably a hundred mini fitness videos teaching you how to work your shoulders and your anterior tibialis. What is that? Well, I tell you in the video, I teach you how to exercise your rotator cups, how to do cardio. And I'm not the only fitness professional doing this. The internet is flooded with lots of fitness professionals just offering up free advice on how to get it done. So if you truly think like, I don't know how to do that. Okay, great. Um, 
<laughs> exercise can be pretty much any movement. That's right. It doesn't have to be particular or fancy. Now, there are the four pillars of fitness, strength, cardio, flexibility, and balance. Uh, but yeah, you can find tons of advice on doing all of those things. And here's the other thing. I love learning new things. I love learning how to do new things. So I'll use, for example, the time I did the belly dancing class, which was comical, but I love being the one in the room who who was new, who was fresh, who was completely uh, unskilled in the performance or the, the skill. So it's nice to be the new guy. And don't ever take, don't ever have shame associated with trying something new. You should always be proud if you're reaching out of your box and saying, hey, I'd like to learn something else. When I was teaching kickboxing back when I was fighting, people would show up and I would teach them, you know, maybe a jab and a cross and they'd go, oh, I feel silly. I'm no good at this. And I would say, really? As if there's any reason for you to be good at this. Why would you be good at kickboxing? Why would you be good at head movement and a roundhouse kick? Like you're, you're here because it's new and interesting and exciting. And so when it comes to fitness, branch out. You can investigate. There's, again, all sorts of resources online, including my own. There's magazines, there's books, there's podcasts, there's friends. You can always ask for guidance, but it is there. Ask for it. Ignorance is not an, a, a valid excuse period, end of story. If you want the knowledge, it's there. Okay. I can't afford a gym or a trainer. So who, why do you need those things? You can stand up and do jumping jacks. That's exercise. You don't need a gym. You don't need a trainer. Um, I do consider fitness, uh, investment and in, spending money on fitness and investment, not frivolous. So frivolous is the frappe latte at some fancy coffee shop. I think spending money on fitness is always an investment in your health and something that you should not shy away from. But I know we all have budgets. The sidewalk is free. The park is free. Push-ups are free. Burpees are free. Running in place is free. There's all sorts of free things. So I don't care how much money you do or don't have. Some of the fittest people in the world are in these very poor African nations and they run with no shoes. Yet they're in incredibly fit because it's important to them. And so, yeah, I don't care how much money you have. And you know what? There's a lot of really morbidly obese uh, billionaires. Who cares? Money is not an issue. Use the free ground surrounding you, the ones that your feet are planted on. Okay. It takes too long to grocery shop and prepare a meal. Cry me a river. <laughs> that is absurd. You know what the quickest, easiest food is? Like an apple. It takes no no time at all. In fact, you can pick one up at the gas station. You could get the gas and run in and get a banana and an apple. Eating healthy does not take time. Uh, in fact, all the fresh produce that you can eat raw, it's, it's pretty darn quick. Um, I, with my kids, so I'm a vegetarian. You don't have to be a vegetarian. I just, I'm a bleeding heart for animals. So don't feel pressure to do that. However, with my kids, we would eat fruit. Um, I, I give them grapes and carrots and then boar's head sliced deli meat, or you could have whatever sliced deli meat, but I'd give them turkey, turkey breast that was pre-cooked on a plate. Boom. Dinner is served. Some black beans. Boom. Dinner served. So eating healthy can be really quick and be really inexpensive. And um, yeah, yeah. Easy, easy. Time is not an explanation. Casseroles take a long time to make. I don't make them. Uh, don't need to run those hundred dollar races and help others before you take care of yourself first, right? And it's okay to be to do both, right? You can choose a funding a charity through a race if you're already going to be giving money instead of just writing a check. Write a check on an adventure that benefits both you and a cause. But yeah, you can always just go run for free. The sidewalks don't have any charges on them. At last I looked. All right, next one. I can't get fit because of family obligations. The most appalling thing I ever hear is from parents who say, I can't exercise because I have kids. And how dare they blame their children for their lack of fitness, right? So you, you've spent your child's whole life saying, well, I would be in good shape if I didn't have kids. And then you drop dead when your kids are 22 and they say, oh, it was my fault. Mom couldn't exercise because she had me. No, that, that, that's not valid. And that's not fair to your child. That's psychological abuse. So instead, what you do is you say, I have kids. Gosh, I love these little people so much. Or I have a spouse or elderly parents I love. I need to take care of myself so I can be 
here for them and I can be here with them. How about that? What if you use the people around you that you love as your incentive to get fit? That's a totally different way to look at it, right? You have the little baby and you're like, it's so cute. I'm overweight because I just had a baby and it doesn't count. No, it counts. It totally counts. If you if you gain excessive amounts of, pregnant, of weight while you're pregnant, it counts. That, that actually threatens your child. So that's not okay. It's not okay to be overweight when your kid is five or 15 or 25. If you love this little person and you want to be here to see them grow up, get married, graduate, have kids of their own, whatever they do, you need to take good care of yourself, right? Depriving them of your existence or your ability to have fun is not okay. And so um, blaming our family is not a valid excuse. In fact, I have, oh, I wish I could remember her name. Her name just fell out of my head, but she's a wonderful woman I know from the races that I announced. And yeah, Sternfeld, Mike, he's got a great story. Watch his episode of The Fitness Show. Um, he's lost almost 400 pounds. But this woman, I wish I could remember her name. Her husband has been in, uh, I, he's injured. I think it was a military injury. And he's been hospitalized. And instead of saying, well, I'm his caregiver now, I can't exercise. She got herself three different gym memberships. So no matter what um, medical appointment he was at, she could take the time and go exercise while he was doing physical therapy or occupational therapy or while he was in the hospital. Instead of saying, ah, I can't do it because he's sick and he needs care, she said, holy hell, he's sick and needs care. I need to be in the best shape of my life. And so I love her. I wish I could remember her name. It's fallen out. It's been a little bit, but you have choices. And uh, even better, what I encourage you to do is include your family within your workouts. Family fitness can be lots of fun, whether you go out and play Frisbee or you wrestle in the living room or you go out dancing on Thursday night together. It's totally up to you. But do this as a family activity. Change your family tree. If you come from a family of obese um, people, stop. Stop it right now. That is where this, this family tree, this bloodline ends. You will no longer be a part of this bad behavior. And there are almost zero families on planet Earth that are obese genetically. People have obese families because they are uh, they have bad habits culturally, right? They eat bad food. They do not exercise. It's their, the behaviors they pass down from generation to generation as the reason why they all have diabetes or have heart disease or certain cancer. So you just slam on the brakes. You are not going to tolerate obesity in your family anymore. That is your job to uh, make a U-turn, right? Your family moving forward is healthy, is strong. You care what you put in your mouth. You seek out active adventure, Buck stops here. It's your job. You love your family. You're all fit moving forward. I can't wait to see that email come in two months from now telling me about all the cool things you're doing with your family. Okay. Um, the other excuse. I'll do it tomorrow. No, you won't. <laughs> Okay, well, what you need to do is find the motivation to get up and now just put the Fitzy on your shoulder. And so this works for a lot of folks is they put a little teeny tiny Fitz Kohler right here. And when they start like, I don't want to do it, she pipes up and she's like, listen, slacker, you need to get to work. You need to get up. You're going to feel so much better when you put your shoes on and you walk the dog or if you dance in the kitchen or what a goal lift weight. So put the Fitzy on your shoulder and compel yourself to do better today counts. You've got 24 hours in this day. And if you're not deliberately, ex deliberately exercising, you might be regressing, right? Maybe your back is a little tighter. Maybe your calves are a little tighter. Maybe you get a little weaker. So moving your body matters. Your digestive system really relies on movement. So if you don't move your body every day, other things may not move. And so I don't know if you're one of those people who likes to move in your digestive system, perhaps you'll go out for some exercise. Okay, and if you guys have any um, excuses that you would like to add to the list, please go. I have about, uh, I've, got, I've got a bunch here, but please feel free to add on if you would like to. Um, weather sucks, it's too hot, too cold, too rainy. Oh, okay, I get it. It's 5,050 degrees here in Florida with a 9 million percent humidity. So I exercise indoors, right? I go out and I do stuff in the water when it's boiling hot and then I exercise indoors. Yes, I'm a member of a gym, but I also have a home with an air conditioning. So 
whatever, too hot, too cold. There's always an excuse. You probably have clothes that allow you to adapt to the outdoors. If not, you probably have an indoors. I'm guessing you're on some sort of technological device, a phone, an iPad, a computer. You have an inside. Uh, yeah, you can exercise whether it's not the boss of you. Okay. Oh, I gain weight on vacation. Well, uh, that's absurd. That's absurd. So there's a few angles with vacation is, um, I, I think it's interesting when people go on a cruise and they actually tell me, they tell me Fitz Kohler, I'm going to get my money's worth at the buffet. Well, no, <laughs> you're never, ever going to get your money's worth at the buffet. If you think you're going to go and eat your $2,500 worth of rice and beef. No, you're just not going to do it. And then you're going to feel like crap. Nobody likes to show get home from their vacation 10 pounds heavier, although a lot of people do it. Nobody likes it, but a lot of people do it. So uh, that's just foolish. So instead of planning to eat and drink yourself into oblivion when you go on vacation, why not plan to actually have athletic adventure and make memories? And and that's really what a vacation is for. It's for going out and having some fun and making some memories and maybe having some exhilaration in your life. Um, you're never going to look back 10 years and be like, remember I had that bowl of rice, that bowl of rice when I went on the cruise to Cancun was so great. No, it's not, it is not fulfilling you the way you think it is. It might be filling up your tummy. Um, it might be dulling your brain if you're drinking yourself into oblivion, which is stupid. Uh, but listen, people are like, why should you keep saying stupid? Some behavior is stupid. Uh, so yeah, instead of focusing on food, instead of focusing on alcohol, and listen, if you're going to have, you know, a couple of beers here and there, fine. You're grownups, I'm guessing. So you do your thing. But this is not why we go on vacation is to just sit and rot and drink. And especially, I think it's interesting when people go out in swimsuits and then they just eat and eat and eat all day and drink and drink and drink. And I think, oh my gosh, uh, when I'm in a swimsuit, I'm kind of on my best behavior, right? It's like a water and salad day, not, <laughs> not, not barbecue and 40 beers. So that's, that's an interesting thought process right there. But instead what if you planned vacation around physical activity? What if you went hiking at uh, the Grand Canyon, perhaps? Or maybe you go and uh, go swimming in the Caribbean, perhaps? What if you do zip lining in Costa Rica? Those are fun things. Those are the things that make you say, woohoo, and ha ha, and yay, that was great. Food is not, if you're focused on food, that's going to be a really bad idea. And then this is the other funny thing about vacation is on occasion, people say, oh, I went on vacation and I would have exercised, but I didn't have time. You know what? When you're home and you work from nine to five and you got to pick your kids up and drive them around and get them to the orthodontist and you got to cook dinner, you got to do stuff. Maybe you're short on time. When you're on vacation, all you have is time. All you have is time. That's it. You've chosen to flee your busy life and go to this other scenario. If you're going to Disney World, fine. Get your butt up and go exercise for 30 minutes before you wake up your kids and go to the theme park. Theme park. Or you make a plan for an hour in the middle of the day. Kids, we're going to go swimming and splash around and be active in the water. Tread water. You build exercise into your vacation. But to go on vacation and say, I don't have time. What? doesn't make any sense at all. Invalid. That excuse is super lame. Don't ever make it again. Okay. I don't want to work out alone. All right. That's your excuse. So when I was a teenager, I not only taught group fitness classes at Spa Lady, that's where I got my start teaching. Remember it was called aerobics back in the day? I was teaching aerobics at Spa Lady. And then the management was like, you would be good at other stuff. Come sell memberships. And then I think they made me assistant manager. But I had women come in and they say, well, you know, I really want a membership, um, but I'm only going to join if my friend joins. And I'd say, okay, well, if your friend joins and you guys exercise multiple days of the week, what happened? Oh, well, I'm probably going to lose weight and get in shape. Okay. Well, if your friend doesn't come and you come in multiple times a week, what's going to happen? Well, I'm probably going to lose weight and get in shape. Okay. So pick, do you want to be, uh, bored or together with someone and, and out of shape, or do you want to be in great shape? independent of other people. So I get it. If you really, really want to work out with other people, join a gym, take a class, 
ask a friend, ga gather your spouse or a neighbor, or whatever, take a dog. A dog qualifies as someone to exercise with, but fine, make efforts to exercise with other people. But if the day comes where it's just you and your arms and your legs, and there's an opportunity for you to go get sweaty, well then go do it, right? We're grown ups here on occasion. You got to exercise alone on occasion. You might have to sit in a restaurant alone and eat food. I know that's terrifying to some people, but it's good to be alone. It's part of being a grown up is being able to just be with yourself and control your actions and, and, and just be, it's okay to just exist alone. So fine. If you want to work out with other people do it, but don't let other people's presence deny you from your workouts. Okay. I've worked all day. I'm too tired. That's a very common excuse. So this is what you do. You have two tactics, either a, yeah, get up and you exercise before you go to work. So you don't have the ability for work to wear you out, right? If you know your job is tiring and you're often fatigued when you leave it, fine, exercise before. And you may be saying, but that means I have to wake up even earlier. Yes, that's what I'm saying. However, waking up 45 minutes earlier, it's not that big of a deal. I wake up to announce races at 3.30 in the morning sometime. And I tell you what, when I get to work, I am on crack because it is so much fun. I love doing what I do. So um, sometimes getting up early can be exhilarating. So get up however early it is and get in some exercise. Now, if you don't want to have to take the drive to the stadium to go climb the stadiums or whatever it is you plan to do, just exercise within your own home, right? You've got, make five minutes, make 10 minutes, start there. And eventually those before work workouts will make you feel so good that you'll want to do a little more and you'll set the alarm clock a little bit earlier as you move forward. So that's tactic number one. Tactic number two is to put your gym clothes into your briefcase, your duffel bag, the trunk of your car and work out during work, right? That take your lunch break or do it after work before you get home. So um, you have options there, options that don't exclude avoiding workouts, right? You, you can do something. And in fact, if you have an office door that shuts, you can do push-ups in there, lunges, squats, dips. And again, some people are like, oh, it doesn't matter if I do, in, unless I do 45 minutes, that's crap. That is absolute crap. You can totally pump out a few sets of push-ups, a few sets of bicep curls, put a band or some dumbbells in your office and make it happen. You can do this. I know you can. I'm not asking for big things here. I'm asking for discipline and creativity and commitment. And you get it done. And um, oh yeah, it's too hot. No, it's not. It's not too hot for swimming. It's not too hot for doing the elliptical rider inside. It's not too hot. Trust me. I am living on the sun right now. Okay. Next excuse I see. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, all or nothing. If I can't do my 20 mile bike ride, I do nothing. That's just foolish. Idiot. It's dumb. I don't know who said that, but we don't like that person. No, I do like that person at all, but that's, it's just, you can do something. We've talked about it. little bits go a long way, especially if you do them frequently and you do them regularly. Ah, look at this. Bill Taylor. They just get up a little earlier. It's not so bad. And it might feel bad at first. I don't like waking up early, but eventually it won't feel so bad. It's habit building. And you could be the person who gets up and works out before work. That's awesome. Everybody likes that person. Okay. I hate to run. That's the excuse for not working out. Okay. If you hate to run, don't run. Wand, my magic fitness wand. I just bring. Don't run. Instead, swim bike, roller skate, skateboard, uh, cross country ski, lift weights, dance. There's a bazillion choices for you. You don't have to run. So there you go. I just solved your problem. If you don't like to run, don't run. Walk. <laughs> the end. Okay. Da -da -da -da. Healthy eating costs too much. That's a lie. That is a damn lie. Um, especially if you choose to eat produce that's in season. And so I eat lots of watermelon in the summer. I do not eat watermelon in December. Simple, right? Spaghetti squash, I eat a lot of in the fall. I do not eat a lot of in March. It's very expensive, very rare in the spring. So you go in and you see what's 
on sale or what's in season. You can buy produce that's frozen. Frozen is actually usually a far more nutritious way to consume your produce because that um, those fruits and veggies have been flash frozen and their nutrition has been preserved right there on the spot at the farm or right near the farm. And if you're eating fresh fruit or vegetables, quite often it's lost nutrition in transportation. And, and so that happens every day of a banana, you lose a little more nutrition. So frozen food, quite often on sale, you can get it at a great price. Canned fruits and vegetables work, just try and get them without a lot of added sugars or syrups. But yeah, just find stuff on sale. In here in Gainesville, Florida, where I live, there's a grocery store that has boneless, skinless, hormone-free chicken breast on sale every Tuesday for $2.99 a pound. So I, my son probably eats 52 pounds of chicken a week. I go every Tuesday and I buy the chicken on sale. And so I save about 50%. And so healthy eating can be affordable if you're smart. And that's all I'm asking you to do is make good decisions. And is it ever a better decision to buy a bag of Doritos that's $3.99 over a cantaloupe that's $3.99? No, it's a lazy decision and Doritos taste good. But if you actually are committed to your health, you're going to choose the produce item. Yeah. In fact, unhealthy food is quite often very, very expensive. Yeah. Don't buy the junk food then. Just skip out on it. You know, if you go to an ice cream shop right now, I think ice cream is like four to seven bucks per cone. Ma, that's very, very expensive. You can get so many strawberries for the same amount of food or same amount of money. Okay. One meal won't matter. Uh, yeah, that's true. If you eat all sorts of healthy ways, right? You're almost always eating nutritiously and then you have one reckless meal, fine, you're right. It will not matter. But quite often, and, and you know what? Look in the mirror, go see if you are a super fit person, if that one meal doesn't matter. Or are you a person who every day is saying, well, this meal won't matter, right? So perhaps you go, to breakfast with a friend today and you have a stack of pancakes with butter and whipped cream, you're like, oh, it's just breakfast. And then tomorrow you go to Italian, you have stuffed shells and garlic bread and a Coke. You know, if you have that one meal that doesn't matter every single day, well, they do matter. They do matter. And so look in the mirror, do a physical assessment. Do your meals matter? Um, no, here we go. And this is great. Mike says, it will snowball you into more bad meals. That's right. I mean, it's it's a slippery slope. And, and this is interesting to me. You know, when you ask an alcoholic or a drug addict to stop doing the things that are causing them problems, you go cold turkey, right? If you have a cocaine addiction, you have to go cold turkey on cocaine in order to solve your problem. If you are a food addict, if you are obese because you have reckless eating habits, you can't go cold turkey on food. You have to be moderate, you know, and that's that's a tough thing for someone who's got an addiction and has been reckless their whole life. You know, Mike, Mike is down almost 400 pounds. Can you imagine the type of discipline and behavioral changes he has had to make to get to be this very fit 200-ish pound guy who just ran a marathon? I mean, it's a very big commitment, very different than recovering from other addictions. So yeah, one meal, if it truly is one meal, then fine, it doesn't matter. If I, you know, I'm in really good shape. If I went out and I had stuffed shells and garlic bread tonight, probably isn't gonna do too much. But if I did that on a regular basis, I wouldn't be that super fit, fit scholar anymore. So, um, yeah. oh, and here's the other thing, the cheat meal, oh my gosh. Cheat meal, cheap day, or cheat day, drives me bonkers. Cause I was thinking, you're an adult. What are you cheating? Who are you cheating on? Either you choose, you've got, ideally you'll be using your caloric budget, right? If you aren't of ideal weight and you need to lose between one and 1,000 pounds, go to fitness.com, look up the exact formula for weight loss. And I'll teach you how to eat the right amount of the right food for the size you want to be. You'll be using a caloric budget. So um, you don't have to cheat. On, what are you cheating on? I just, I go crazy when grownups like, it's a cheat meal. Really? Is somebody looking over your shoulder? You're cheating. You're going to get busted by the food police. No, you make deliberate decisions. I have eaten all day, uh, very nutritiously, and I have 600 calories left within my caloric budget. And I'm going to have some, I'm going to have a hot dog or some beer or whatever it is. You don't cheat. Um, that's absurd. And a whole cheat day, that just seems like a bad idea, especially for your digestive system. So you make deliberate choices. You, every 
every bite you take is your decision. And that is very important to know um, that there are no accidents. And I don't, you don't have like a Cheeto ah, fell into your mouth. And, oh my gosh, how did that happen? How did I get the Cheeto in there? I just, whoops, a whole Sunday <laughs> fell into my mouth. Uh, that's never accidental. And from the land I live in, nobody jacks up my jaw and shoves food inside. So every bite I take, every sip I take is my deliberate choice. So if you are now very overweight, the good news, bad news. Like the bad news is you can't blame anyone else. You can't be like, I'm overweight because of my husband likes to eat lots of food and he brings it in the house. Okay, well, you still chose to put it in your mouth, right? You can't blame anyone on planet Earth for your obesity or lack of fitness but you. But here's the good news on that. The greatest news ever is you are exclusively in charge of you. You have con incredible control over your body. You cannot change your height, right? But other than that, you can trim down if you are 35% body fat and you'd rather be 22% body fat. You can make that happen. You don't have to rely on your spouse or your kid or your trainer or your boss. There's nobody else who can cause fitness for you. Nobody else can limit your fitness either. And so I think that is super exciting. You, you're whatever you are right now, you're perfectly responsible for. You did that to you. And if you want to get to a better place, you can do that for you. And I love that. Isn't that nice to have control? You know, if if you're an actor and you want to get a job, you have to rely on the casting director to choose you. It's, it's hard to be in a position where people are determining your fate. With fitness, you determine your fate. You move your body, you, you stretch it, you lift the weights, or you don't, right? You watch what you put in your mouth, or you don't. You get to make that choice. So I think that's very, very exciting news. Um, yeah, <laughs> Bill, cheat meals become cheat days, which become cheat weeks, and so on. And who are you cheating? Yourself. It's a very stupid philosophy. So don't ever be the person who's like, this is my cheat meal. Don't pay attention. No, you just say, I'm choosing to eat hot dogs and french fries, and it's none of your business what I put in my mouth right? It's interesting. When I go out with people, they look like, oh, Fitz is looking. I never look at somebody else's plate other than my own. It's not my business. Okay. Number 16. Here's the excuse. I'm sick. Okay. I've been there. When you're actually sick, it's okay to rest. It's okay to rest. But if you're long-term sick, um, like I was chemo, I had to make choices, you know? So cardio and strength training weren't really on my list of to do, but I did hordes and hordes of stretching and, you know, lack of mobility and inflexibility is also a precursor to pain. Uh, and I didn't want to have that. And so, yes, I was sick, very, very sick, but did I do the thing that I could do? I did. I stretched a lot. Um, now maybe you're sick, but you're not terribly sick. Maybe you got a cold. Okay. We'll keep your germs to yourself and maybe go walk around the neighborhood, right? Can you do that if you have a cold? I think you probably can. If you have a backyard pool, can you swim around when you have a cold? Probably, right? Can you do a plank with a cold? For sure. So, you know, there are various levels of sick and you just have to listen to your body. Um, you don't always have to stop completely unless you're a guy and then get whiny. So perhaps if cold, you may just need to stay in bed. Now, I'm sorry, picking on guys. <laughs> so sorry. Okay. Hormones. I can't exercise because of hormones. Uh, that's insane. You can exercise with hormones. And if you're referring to perhaps your periods, well, the good news is, is that exercise is considered um, a really good way to relieve uh, cramps. Menstrual symptoms are relieved by exercise. So um, you could do that. I'm really not sure what kind of hormone stuff guys get. I don't know why I don't know that. But guys, if you have hormone stuff, exercise will likely relieve those issues. Uh, if we're talking about menopause, uh, you should exercise through menopause. And it's very interesting to me. So many women will say, oh, I've gained weight because of menopause. Um, statistically, menopause is only responsible for half a pound of weight gain per year. So if you started menopause last year and you're 20 pounds extra now, 
Once again, you're personally responsible for that weight. It's not menopause. You've changed your habits dramatically, and that's why the weight has crept on. And so the good news is you can undo it, right? And so I get it. Um, if you're having the the sweats, that's no fun. But when you're exercising, at least it's, del- it's the right place to be sweating, okay? So uh, perhaps you exercise in a pool or you exercise in a highly air-conditioned gym, Uh, But yeah, hormone issues are going to stop you from exercising. You can't do a plank because you have cramps or menopause. No, of course you can. So it's not a valid excuse. You have to mentally get past it. You have to be tough. And and, uh, sometimes life throws tough things at us, right? But as I've told many of you before, you can do hard things, right? Life isn't easy all the time. And uh, sometimes you got to push through some stuff that feels uncomfortable. It's okay to be uncomfortable. Here's the other thing. It's okay to go to bed a little bit hungry, right? Sometimes we get to bed like, oh, I have to go eat. I'm a little bit hungry. All right. Well, there's people facing actual starvation and they do just fine. So it's okay to be a little bit hungry and not have food right now. You can wait until you get to something healthy. You don't have to go to the vending machine and get pretzels because you're really hungry. Uh, Just wait until you get to something that's quality to put in your body and aim for quality. If you aim for quality, um, you'll be in a much better position, but yeah, you sometimes just have to grit through discomfort to get to the end goal, which what is your end goal? What do you want to achieve? You can use the comment section. Let me know specifically what you want to achieve. I know what I'm trying to achieve. Uh, marathon, October 11th and lots of strength, lots of flexibility. I've got a to-do list and I've written it down. And that's actually a really good idea for you guys is to write down your specific goals, get a BHAG, a big, hairy, audacious goal that you want to achieve something long-term, something that you will be so proud of. And maybe you'll tell people about and you'll hang it on your wall and then have a bunch of little goals between now and then, you know, my, I got the marathon goal. So little goals was, you know, go 10 miles and then it was go 12 and make sure I strength train two to three days per week, which I'm doing. And so little goals, big goals, write them down and you'll be far more likely to stick with the plan. And if you write them down and you put them in your calendar, increase the likelihood that you will stick with these workouts or this, or your eating habits infinitely uh, if you write them down and put them in your calendar. Okay. I don't like healthy food that I, I can't do anything about that. That's, that's probably a damn lie. So you may not like eating kale chips. I'm with you. You may not like eating green smoothies or drinking them. I'm with you. I wouldn't drink a green smoothie. If you put a gun to my head, sorry, like a strawberry smoothie, but I don't want anything with vegetables in a smoothie. That is not good for me. I will eat my vegetables. Thank you. I might add a little salt. Thank you. Raw, cooked, whatever, steamed. I I will not drink my vegetables. So you make those choices, but you do like some sort of healthy food. You just got to find the stuff you like. And, and what we find is most people stick with the same 20 ingredients. So perhaps you like chicken and beef and maybe your favorite veggies are carrots and broccoli and cauliflower. You might have chicken and beef when you go and carrots, broccoli, cauliflower when you go out for Japanese food, when you have Italian food, when you have Mexican food. You know, you may you may be going with those same ingredients, mix and match in different ways with different flavorings, you know, soy sauce, marinara sauce, sour cream, et cetera. So uh, yeah, just, just pick what you like and then make attempts. So at my grocery store, I, I shop at a Publix. If I go in and I say, what is this? Can I try it? They will let me have a bite of whatever it is that I had not tried before. And so your produce department probably will offer you the same opportunity or, you know, you just buy one grape. They actually sell cotton candy grapes. If nobody's tried cotton candy grapes, you got to do it. Every time I mention it, people go try the cotton candy grapes and they come back and go, oh my God, it's so good. They actually taste like cotton candy. But I learned to like them because my produce department allowed me to try a cotton candy grape. Uh, so, so keep venturing it out. And, and, don't just try, you know, if you don't like raw carrots, fine. Try them cooked. Try them blended into sauce. You know, there's a there's a great way to try a variety of fruits and vegetables in different formats. So um, you do like healthy food. You just have to figure out which you like and then have a lot of that. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I lose motivation. Okay. Um, hold on, let's see. We got a good David Kuntz. 
I love him. He's one of my favorite California runners. You can open a whole new world of produce options by visiting an Asian market. If there's one in your area, that's a really good idea. Yeah, isn't it interesting? I mean, they're Asian market here in the US, yet they have access and they're displaying different choices. That's a really good idea, um, Dave. Thank you for that. I'm sure probably other um, ethnic markets would have good choices too, good variety good variety. Okay. Losing motivation. It's hard to stick with it. I get it. It's hard. Um, but again, you can do hard things. This is why we remind ourselves. So, um, what can you do to stay motivated? I mean, I think keeping that end goal. So maybe your goal is to, um, hike up to Leadville. I don't know. I'm just throwing things out. You want to be able to learn how to do aerial dancing, right? So, your goal is you're constantly going to pick something each day to move you towards that goal. Do you have a sign in your house or a sign on your refrigerator that says your goal is to lose 50 pounds or to be in the 100s for your weight? Remind yourself okay, that physical reminders, use pen, use a marker, use a, shirt, a, a dry erase, whatever it is. Remind yourself, put it on your bathroom mirror, you know, 35 days until the cruise. And I tend not to be very vanity driven as a fitness professional. Now for me, I, there's a certain way I like my body to look, but I don't traditionally harp on you guys and what you look like in a swimsuit. But the reality is maybe that's what you want. Maybe you want to feel great walking around in the swimsuit on the beach, wherever you go. So, so give yourself a countdown timer and maybe buy the swimsuit and hang it up somewhere in your house where you can see it and you earn your way there. Or maybe you're just trying to accomplish that physical goal, whether it's the marathon or the bike race, or maybe you want to be able to rollerblade with your son for his 16th birthday, which I did, which makes me very cool in my own mind. That's something I'll remember long term. So um, write it down share your goals publicly. And so I love it when people I have on Facebook, a group is called the Hottie Body Fitness Challenge. I'm going to write it here and share it with you. I am. It is free. And within the Hottie Body Fitness Challenge, it's a group on Facebook. I guide people on how to exercise daily. I give out daily workout assignments, use the exact formula for weight loss, and it's a support group. But what I find is when people out themselves, they get out of the closet and they say, hey, I'm trying to accomplish X, Y, Z. The rest of the hotties swarm and support them and ask, how are you doing? How is your training coming? You know, where have you been? I haven't seen you post lately. Are you still using the exact formula for weight loss? So go public about it. Go public within my group. We'll support you. Or just tell your own circle of friends and family and uh, they will help lift you up and hold you accountable. And sometimes it's ego, right? Sometimes it's pure ego that will get us to that finish line. I mean, I know with Boston, not only <laughs> not only do I have y'all uh, looking for me to see if I finish this race in October, but now Catherine Switzer and Dina Castro, are like, yeah, I'm gonna look for you at the finish line. Oh my gosh, I will slither like a snake all the way to that finish line if that's what it takes. But I've got some real heavy hitters there expecting me to show up at the finish line. So I will be there. Uh, so going public with your fitness goals, with your athletic uh, endeavors or your weight loss, I think it is very, very helpful. Um, Michael, there was, uh, so Michael asked, where's the link? There's not a link. I don't have the ability to, to do that right here. But um, if you go to Facebook and you search Hottie Body Fitness Challenge, Mike, I really wanted you to join. I'm so glad you're watching this. Okay, so we're getting to the end of the list. I know I'm rambling, but I'm very excited about this. And I hope that you will tell your friends when someone makes an excuse for being lame and not doing what they need to do to be fit, say, watch this episode because fits will bust up all your excuses. Okay, stress. Too stressed to deal with my boss, so uh, I can't exercise. Again, what sense does that make? Exercise is a proven method of stress relief. So you're going to say, okay, I'm so stressed. I'm so angsty because of my fight with my friend or my boss yelled at me. So I'm just going to sit still and stew and let all that horrible internal frustration pent up. What? No, you go get it out. Exercise will allow you to actually physically release, get rid of all that toxic emotional crap. So stress 
it's not a valid excuse. Again, none of these are valid excuses, but some are just no brainers. If you would like to calm down, if you would like to feel better, if you would like to exert that physical anxiety that is weighing heavily on your chest, go hit a heavy bag, right? Go hit a heavy bag, go jump rope, go, um, I don't know, any, any of the above, right? We've got lots of opportunity. Go dance the night away with a friend. Go dance the night away alone. I tell you what, as soon as dancing, as I find a place, I'm going to go out and go dancing alone. I'm not going to invite anyone that I know. It's just going to be me. And any man who wants to take me for a spin can take me for a spin on the dance floor because I think dancing is very, very fun. And I haven't done the two-step in a very long time. So stress, dance it away. All right. Sometimes it's just take your mind off things. And if, if you're exercising, if you're doing a Zumba class or a Pilates class, I tell you what, that requires a lot of focus and you won't be able to think about your idiot boss or your idiot employees. Okay. Um, and I don't know who this is. It's mystery Facebook user, but thanks Fitz. I've been lame and using all of the excuses needed this pep talk. I love to get the kick in the coolie. And I love you for saying coolie because <laughs> I thought only my family growing up, my mom was like, ooh, to pinch a coolie. And I didn't know if anybody else knew a coolie man. I haven't heard that word in a long time. Who are you, mystery Facebook user, giving you the kick in the coolie? No more excuses. This makes me extra happy. Okay. Pain. I can't exercise because of pain. Okay. Pain is a somewhat valid excuse, but really what it requires is a couple of things. Yeah, pain requires a solution. So let's figure out what's causing the pain, right? If you need knee surgery, let's get it, right? If you have low back pain, perhaps it's because you're tight and weak because you haven't been exercising. And so you should find out why you have pain first, and then we start moving towards getting a solution. Most runner pain, for example, I always ask when I teach my strength training for runner's clinic, I say, who, who has uh, pain, Run, you know, leg pain, hands go up. Have you had a fall? Have you had a sudden twist where you thought, oh no, I did something wrong. Most of the hands say, no, I didn't have any of that. It's just, it came on. Okay. Well, that's quite often and pain induced by tightness and weakness, not injury. So again, I'm not your doctor. You should go to a physical therapist and let them assess you. Sometimes pain is because you're not doing the right exercise. So uh, let's figure out the cause of the pain. Let's find a solution for the pain, but also we can work around the pain. So your shoulder hurts. You've got a lot of pain in your shoulder. Okay. Walk, do lunges, do squats. They don't require your shoulders. Okay. Maybe your ankle hurts. Great. You can do bench press. You can do lat pull. You can do bicep curls. You can probably punch on a heavy bag if you're seated. So there's a ton of things that you can do to work around pain. Sometimes pain and injury, they don't for, they don't need to stop us completely. Sometimes they only require us to be creative. Um, but yeah, I think you should find a solution for your pain. And quite often the solution for your pain will be exercise. Amazing how that works. Oh, and here we go. It's Chrissy Lyons, Chrissy. You and I, the Cooley girls. That makes me so happy. <laughs> do you do you know anybody else who uses that word? I mean, it's uh, my mom said Cooley, so we had tushy, Cooley, bum. I don't know. There's a bunch of great words for bum, and uh, I like using them all. So thank you, Chrissy. That made me laugh. Uh, Mike says I'm actually on this one for pain for core workouts from skin removal. <gasps> Did you already have that? That's very exciting. If that's true. Yeah, Mike, fill me in on that because that's a very big deal. Okay, next excuse. Oh, we kind of went over this. I have my period. All right, well, exercise is great for re relieving cramps. So is sex. I know it feels totally contradictory, but that's what they say. Oh, also, if you have your period, if you're like, I can't exercise because I have my period. Okay, well, buy tampons. I know some people are morally opposed to them, but they're a great way to exercise without your period being on your mind and an issue. So, um, yeah. Oh, look, and, and Chrissy's back. The word coolie is Italian. I did not know that. I'm going to call my mom tonight and tell her we talked about coolies and it's Italian. All right, Mike, you just lower stomach. Wasn't pretty. Oh, I, did you have that recently, Mike? This is very exciting. Congratulations. So Mike has lost almost 400 pounds. He was on an episode of the fitness show. I highly recommend you go back and 
watch it. It's compelling stuff. But yeah, skin removal is a very um, big deal and certainly a next step to getting you feeling and looking the way you want to. So congratulations. I, I, I imagine that's very uncomfortable. And who cares if you had a belly button? Your belly button was there to attach your, your umbilical cord to your mom. You're done with it. <laughs> then they're done. That. You don't need that belly button anymore. Uh, okay. We're, I, my excuse. I worked all week and now I need a break. Uh, what? You spent 40 hour week probably sitting at a desk and now you need a break from sitting at your desk. That's no, that doesn't count. You worked for 40 hours. Now you need to go play, right? And every single day you need to include active adventure, some fun time, some physical activity to get your mind off work and get your body uh, to be its best. And so we talk a lot about the gym and strength training, and I want you to do all that stuff, but pickleball is a really big thing right now. I go walk my dog at this park nearby there's always tons of people out there playing pickleball. They bring their own net. They set it up on the basketball court. Pickleball. And I and they're all ages, right? So you've had a busy week. Go play some pickleball or go play some basketball, even if you're alone. And that's one of the greatest. I always see these men out there and they just are bouncing the ball and shooting the ball. And it makes me so proud of them. I think I love that man. I don't know him, but I want to be his friend. I want to go tell him how he's likely looking at a really long life of health and happiness because he plays basketball alone. So there are things you can do. The other thing I see is packs of people playing disc golf and there's a disc golf course at this park. So uh, yeah, don't look at exercise as a burden, right? It's It doesn't have to be work. It can be a lot of fun. It can be your the thing you look forward to. So instead of saying, oh, I'm done with work. Now I have to go exercise. You go, oh, I'm done with work. Finally, I get to go play pickleball with my friends or table tennis or real tennis or racquetball or soccer, whatever it is. I have, I have a grown-up Antonio Ayala, who I love. Antonio's lost I think like 60 pounds in the past few months. And he's out there playing soccer most nights of the week, two, two games a night. Sometimes he's a bad ass. I'm so proud of him. So, you know, flip that switch instead of having to exercise. Now you get to exercise, exercise at privilege. And I tell you what, when you're not feeling good, when you're down, when you're in pain or you're sick, all you wish for is to be able to go out and play. So, uh, so play, flip the switch. Exercise is an opportunity, not a burden. Okay. I can't exercise because I work night shift. You know what? Same 40 hours as everybody else. So big deal. You exercise at 6 p.m. instead of 6 a.m. Who cares? There's a lot of opportunity when you're not working. It's the day hours. Great. Now you have more opportunity to work out in the fresh air and sunshine. You know, exercising outdoors at 3 a.m. is kind of sketchy, kind of scary. If you work night shift, you have all of your time off as a window of opportunity for exercise outdoors and indoors. So you just got to make it happen. Um, and I would say if you're working night shift, those weird hours, you probably do need exercise to get through it, to boost your energy or to fatigue you and help you go to sleep. So yeah, that's invalid. Same 40 hours as everybody else. Sorry. Um, okay. And this is the last one, which I like, and I'm so glad uh, Mike has reached out. Because this excuse was, I am too heavy and unfit to exercise. <sighs> well, if you are in or close to crisis with your weight and your lack of mobility, then the opposite is true. You need to exercise. And Mike Sternfels is exhibit A of what it takes to go from obese to fit. Uh, it wasn't quick. It took him a while. But what he says is that he started off going for a little walk. And maybe that walk was walking two houses down and he came back in and he was tired. He sat down and got some rest. And then the next time he walked three houses down and then it was four. He started with baby steps. Baby steps is the only way to do it when you're super overweight or super unfit. You cannot snap your fingers and become fit guy or fit girl. It just doesn't work that way. And so you have to put in the time. And if you start off with baby steps and very small expectations, then you won't ever backtrack, right? You won't ever slide back because you injured yourself being foolish, being trying to be a weekend warrior. You know, when you go bit by bit, make gentle progress, you never have that crisis moment of pain because you did something foolish. So uh, yeah, 
if you are too overweight and unfit that you think you can't exercise, you are in crisis mode. You need it more than anybody and everybody else. And so you start making those um, choices. You start making those choices with every bite you take. You look and you say, helpful or hurtful. If it's hurtful, you put it down, you walk away. If it's hurtful, not only do you put it down, but maybe throw it in the trash and or put it down the garbage disposal so you will not consume it, right? Maybe you have to use great force to remove yourself from the unhealthy food in your mitts. But if you are overweight and that unfit that you think you can exercise, crisis mode, you must. You have to turn. It's all up here, guys. And um, yeah, snap your fingers. Now you're fit. Doesn't work that way. Um, but again, the great news, that that the bad news, you did this to yourself. Whatever you are, you did this. The great news is that you can make all the changes that you want, right? You have the ability to lose one pound or 1,000 pounds. Whatever you need to lose, you are in charge of that. You can make that happen. If you are weak right now, you can work towards being strong. If you are inflexible, if you are tied, if you can't touch your toes without straining something, you can become more flexible. If you fall down a lot, you can increase your balance. You have so much power. And it's interesting to me in all situations how people think they have they don't have control over their weight or their abilities. And uh, you can really turn your life around. If you are sedentary and you know unfit and overweight and your life sucks, okay, we'll start getting out and moving. And one day your life is going to be great, right? You can choose that. You can choose a life full of friendship and adventure and activity. You just have to put yourself out there. Um, I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen and that's my addiction to teaching fitness. And I started when I was 14, but I love seeing people accomplish great things for themselves. I love it. I love it. Some people are in these careers where they get like the salesman of the year plaque and their whole walls has all these plaques and good for them. That's great that they're successful in their field. My success comes with you guys making good decisions for yourself. And those, those messages, the private messages, the tweets, the emails that say, hey, Fitz, I did it. I accomplished X, Y, Z. I feel great in my jeans, or I can't believe I have a medal. I did my first 5K, whatever it is. That's what fills me up. And so um, I have a very strong belief that you can accomplish whatever you want. And it's, 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 <laughs> there's a few things I believe in, and uh, you're one of them. You're one of them. So put these stupid excuses in the garbage disposal. Just jam them up whenever you feel an excuse. Um, slap yourself across the face with a little fitzy on your shoulder right there. And she's like, Hush, you get up and get out, get moving, do something. That's right. Something's better than nothing when you, if you're trying to lose weight or increase the quality of your health and you're looking at the donut, take the donut, shove it down the garbage disposal and listen to that fitzy. That's like, no, <laughs> you don't need that. That's not beneficial. Throw it away. Find something better because you deserve better. Okay. So I have rambled on for a very long time, but excuses are a big deal. If we can get past these things, you guys are on Stoppable. Thank you so much for contributing this huge list of excuses. As you post your workout pictures, I want you to tag me at fitness so I can see all the progress that you're making. If you haven't done it already, visit fitness.com exact formula for weight loss. Follow me on social media. Nope. Whoop. Right there, <laughs> getting used to this over there um, at fitness on YouTube, on Instagram. And uh, yeah, I want to follow along with your success. I'm really excited about you and uh, you can and, and should do better. I'm excited to see it. Get to work, everybody. Love you. Bye.